The growing unrest across Syria puts more pressure on Bashar al-Assad as his security forces intensify their crackdown. But what happened to reforms promised by the president at the beginning of the uprising? And is a new cabinet the solution? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rida Fakhri. Stability in Syria has become a major cause for concern for local authorities as anti-government protests spread to the country's second largest city, Aleppo. Meanwhile, in the capital itself, several hundred students protested for a second day against the government at Damascus University. As security forces clamped down on protesting students, the government was quick to accuse the Muslim Brotherhood of being behind the unrest. But as protests continue to spread throughout the country, is Bashar al-Assad's tight grip over Syria beginning to slip? To discuss all this, I'm joined by our guests from Amsterdam, Iyas al-Malih from the Haitham Malih Foundation for the Defense of Human Rights Defenders in Syria. And from Manchester, Osama Munajid, a Syrian political activist. Osama Munajid, let me ask you this. Uh, the, the protests, as we say, continue to spread. The government now saying that it is time to reshuffle the cabinet. Is this a desperate PR stunt by the president himself, or could it really be the beginning of what might be a genuine process of political reform? Well, they had their chances of political reforms, uh, you know, decades ago, even in Bashar's era, more than 11 years ago. Uh, this is, as you called it, a, a desperate call, uh, uh, just try to, to appease uh, the uh, more and more um, uh, people joining the uh, uprising uh, throughout the, the country. But uh, the uprising is gaining momentum, as we've seen in, in Aleppo yesterday and um, in, in various parts of the, of the country. Uh, um, all cities, towns and villages now, uh, uh, we've, uh, we've seen demonstrations uh, within and uh, more people are joining. Even those who were on the side, undecided, uh, 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 were you know, uh, some kind of uh, believers that uh, Bashar was a reformer. Uh, after the bullets that was, um, you know, were shot at, at the peaceful protesters, and uh, after the brutal uh, uh, treatment of the security forces to those peaceful de demonstrations, uh, those undecided joined also the the, the uprising. Uh, uh, the regime cannot fool no one with this uh, whole government reshuffle thing. It, it, the all, all we all know, uh, ministers in Syria are all puppets. Uh, it's a facade for this whole uh, uh, military rule. Uh, they, they, they want this kind of facade of, of, of civilians dressing in, in pinstripe suits and, and, and talking languages. But in fact, a minister in Syria cannot decide uh, on micro issues, let alone macro issues or, or, or changing policy. Yes, al Malik, can, can this reshuffle be dismissed outright? After all, uh, we've yet to see who will form part of this new cabinet. Does it matter who it is, whether the members of the ruling Ba'ath Party are prominent, whether there are independents, whether there are opposition members? Or do you think, as uh, Osama Munajid does, that at the end of the day, it won't mean very much if this new cabinet isn't granted real authorities? It really doesn't matter, as uh, you, you said uh, and uh, Osama mentioned earlier. Uh, and we have seen it uh, happen in, uh, in Egypt before, uh, where the president uh, government uh, you know, collapsed. He formed a new government. Uh, um, people did not uh, stop. Uh, protesting because really the issue is not there it's not in the government uh, that is uh, like uh, Osama said is a facade really uh, not even the, the prime minister in uh, in Syria can do anything um, not even the vice president uh, can decide on on major issues it's the president and his security advisors um, those are really the decision makers so um, uh, but, but could the this, government could can this decide. Reshuffle, though, could, could it lead to renegotiating, renegotiating of the relationship between the different centers of power, between the president and the army, between the president and the security services, between the president and, it, and members of his own clan? I, I really don't think so. It's uh, the, the, the uh, security advisors around the president will not let their grip go. Uh, and this is really what's uh, holding up the, the uh, reforms for the last uh, 11 years. And uh, it's not going to stop now because demonstrators are in the street. 
Um, unfortunately, they think that they can uh, clamp down on the demonstrators and, and uh, stop it. But like we have seen in Egypt and other places, it's not going to stop. It's going to escalate. Um, so the, the president right now, I think, is as a, uh, at a uh, really uh, uh, major um, you know, decision making, whether he will uh, pack up and leave uh, like the people would like to see, um, or he is going to continue killing more and become another uh, criminal on the run. Osama Munashid, like how, much, how much of the current dilemma the government is facing is to do with its own handling of the situation, having allowed the situation perhaps to get out of hand, to, uh, to spread in the way it did because of the violent crackdown that was implemented in some parts of the country. Well, this is, uh, this is one of the terrific uh, nonviolent struggle, is that a dictatorship will face dilemmas. If they clamp down on, on protesters and, and shot uh, and used brutal uh, uh, force uh, to clamp down on protesters, that will, will cause uh, more casualties and then more funerals. And during the funerals, will, there will be more casualties. And the cycle of, of violence will, will, from the regime side will, will continue. And we'll see more and more people joining uh, the uprising because they, they see what is you know, happening to their brothers and sisters in the country. And if they uh, you know, uh, did not use uh, uh, brutal violence, and um, uh, and let the uprising, uh, uh, um, you know, be. Uh, then they also the uprising will gain more momentum, and people people will will you know uh, be uh, more uh, will crack the you know wall of fears in their uh, you know in their inner minds, and will join the uprising again because you know there will be no killing and, and no 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 brutal force against them. So this is a dilemma. Another dilemma is if the regime really offered reforms at this point. People would say, uh, yes, we are in control. We managed to get um, something genuine out of this regime, out of this mafia, uh, after all, and um, uh, 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 with only a few, few weeks of, of demonstration. So uh, let's carry on. People would feel that they are in action and the regime is in reaction phase. Uh, on the contrary, if they, not, if they did not offer uh, genuine reforms and um, uh, they kept uh, just talking about promises and studies and stuff, then um, uh, people will keep also uh, 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 protesting and demanding uh, uh, genuine reform. So it's again another dilemma. You see, wh whatever they, w they are doing, they are, we believe they are going. Well, uh, 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 they will be persecuted also, and they, they will be, uh, 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 this whole dictatorship will be knocked off. Well, let's bring into our discussion now Professor George Jabour, a former member of the Syrian parliament. Professor Jabour, is the president of Syria missing the point by deciding to reshuffle his government, his cabinet, is he simply shifting the blame downwards without really assuming any responsibility for what's been going on? Well, uh, f forming a new cabinet is certainly a sign of response to the demands of the demonstrators. Uh, other uh, signs of response to the demands of the demonstrators uh, are also there and they are quite clear. Uh, one of them was the uh, granting of nationality to some Syrian citizens who were deprived of this nationality. Uh, some of the replies were the establishment of investigating committee uh, in order to see uh, what really happened. How difficult would it have been for the president to answer one of the key demands of the protesters, which was the lifting of the state of emergency? Well, uh, lifting of the state of emergency was something that was promised recently by Busayna Shaban and then it was approved by the president uh, on his speech in his speech on the 30th of March. I think it is a matter of perhaps few days. But then uh, there is something uh, important in this question. Uh, we are really in a state of emergency now. Is it the opportune time to lift the state of emergency? I say this. I am for the lifting of the state of emergency as of this moment, notwithstanding the fact that we are in a real state of emergency. Why? Because the people ask for the lifting of the state of emergency. There is a general consensus on that in the government, in the Ba'ath Party, and amongst the population. So I am for the lifting of the state of emergency, but it looks rather ironic that we lift the state of emergency at a time when there is a need for a state of emergency. What I hope is that peace will return to, the, to Syria, and the sooner the better. There will be no bloodshed, 
There will be no fighting. There will be real uh, evaluation of the demands of the protesters, real implementation of the demands of the protesters. And I suppose that things will go well. And I hope this will mark a good beginning for a new era in Syria. Yes, al Malih, the government's More perspective articulated uh, there by Professor George Abour is that the priority should now be given to security and to ensuring that there is stability in Syria. Reforms will come later. Your reaction? That's, uh, that's the, the, the uh, game that the government play, always trying to buy time. Lifting the state of emergency does not take more than five minutes of the president time. When, they, when he came to power, they changed the constitution. And we are not talking about lifting a state of emergency. But the whole constitution was changed in less than five minutes, so he can become the president. When the people now are demanding the lifting of state of emergency, it's been more than two weeks since he spoke. What happened? What is taking time? It does not take a committee to decide to lift the state of emergency. It only takes a decision of the president. The people are asking for the release of the, of the detainees, the, the political uh, prisoners, the, the prisoner of opinion. It's been a month now, more than a month since the demonstrations have started. What is taking that long? Why, when he released uh, the, 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 the general uh, amnesty, that only, only fit my father as a, a political of, uh, of, uh, op a prisoner of opinion. It did not include anybody else. Why is that? When people are demanding the release of their family members who are detained, what is taking so long? Osama they Manashid, talk about releasing many, many demands, and, and you've articulated a, a few there, uh, Mr. Maleh. But Osama Munajid, uh, demonstrators, some of them at least, have also been asking the government for citizenship for the Kurdish population. The president has, in fact, granted Syrian citizenship to 150,000 Syrian Kurds. He's also allowed. Um, school professors to wear the full face veil at schools? Is he simply trying to placate some within the Syrian community, the Kurds and the Islamists? Or does it mean well, he, something at least to, yeah, to other, to other, to, yeah, to other segments of the demonstrators? Does it mean very much to them? The regime is just trying to play cards here. They're just trying now uh, uh, to appease certain segments of the society so they don't join the uh, uh, uprising in masses, being uh, Islamist or, or, or Kurdish. Uh, uh, now they realize that there are about 200, 300,000 Kurds with, with, no, with no nationality, and now they realize that their decision to uh, 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 prohibit these veiled women from teaching uh, uh, is wrong. Uh, no, not a single demonstrator or protester asked uh, for a government to, to uh, or a government reshuffle, reshuffle or for the government to resign. Uh, this is a, a big fat lie. We, we, all protesters now demanding the lifting state of emergency, releasing all political prisoners and um, stop the killing, everyday killing in the streets, and the torture, and, and kidnapping. Uh, 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 stop the killing civilians, uh, 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 civilian protesters. Um, but because the, 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 uh, the, the demands were not met, and they were only faced with, with, with brutality, now they all chant and demand uh, that people want to topple the regime, as we've seen uh, the same chanting in Egypt and Tunisia. Exactly this, the, the same chanting, and no one would uh, uh, go back home until this whole regime is out and they are put to trial. Professor Jabour, is President Assad repeating the same mistake that was made in Tunisia and in Egypt, uh, blaming it all on the cabinet and its ministers, trying to sack a few governors? Does that solve the solution or I'm is it simply shifting the blame? Well, uh, it is not blaming it on the, par on the, uh, on the cabinet. Uh, the cabinet in the Syrian constitution is the highest executive office. Uh, and uh, the policy of the state is uh, planned by the president himself. Uh, the cabinet is an executive authority. Uh, now, the performance of but one why, minister why may differ cabinet, from the performance of another. Why is the cabinet being minister. reshuffled, though, if it's not blaming it on the cabinet? No, no. Uh, the reshuffling of the cabinet is something that is usually done rather well at intervals. In Syria, we had a last, uh, the last shuffle. Uh, a few months ago, about four months ago, uh, the Minister of uh, uh, Culture was uh, replaced by another minister. The Minister of uh, Irrigation was replaced by another minister. This is an ordinary exercise. Uh, but then uh, we can understand the reshuffling recently of something more serious. A new prime minister 
uh, was appointed. Uh, and uh, the uh, cabinet altogether has resigned. Uh, other, uh, other reshuffles uh, usually kept the prime minister in his place, uh, kept most of the ministers in their place. Now, of course, we are looking for new faces. Let us remember that uh, Prime Minister Ottery uh, stayed in office for uh, something like eight years, which is rather unusual. Uh, but then uh, the uh, reshuffling, the forming of a new cabinet presents a new opportunity for new policies. So obviously the protesters want to see new faces. Will we see fewer faces from the Ba'ath Party? Will we see an increasing role for other political parties in, in the political life of, of Syria? Or will it be the status quo? Well, the Syrian people obviously want to see new faces across the board, starting from the president and down. They do not want to see anybody left from the ruling Ba'ath Party faces in uh, offices anymore. How I think that's very clear demands of the people. How confident are you that more parties will be in law, involved in the political life in, each, in, uh, in Syria? Well, obviously, we see what people are requesting on the, on the ground. That's, uh, that's what they are demanding for. They are demanding a change and end for this regime. A change and an end to this regime, Osama Munajjid, it didn't start this way, did it? Much of the anger of the demonstrators in, in the streets of uh, Dara, Douma, now Aleppo, and other places was not directed at the president, was it? Is he beginning to lose some of the goodwill of the people? Well, there were people obviously on the margins. There were people uh, uh, around the regime or in the middle and undecided who thought that, or, or genuinely thought that Bashar was a reformer. Uh, even um, he, he managed to fool few uh, uh, leaders in the international community that he is a reformer. What we've seen uh, the, is his type of reform comes in bullets and, and machine guns, uh, unfortunately. Uh, things escalated. Obviously, the demands were not the same when uh, the uprising started uh, uh, in March 15th. Uh, people only uh, ask for lift, uh, lifting the state of emergency, releasing political prisoners, and and stopping uh, uh, stop the killing of, of everyone in the street. Uh, but because of, of the extreme violence we've seen, uh, demands escalated uh, to toppling the whole regime and getting rid, uh, rid of, of the whole uh, old system from the president uh, down. Uh, uh, and here is uh, 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 an interesting in, in part of, of uh, in a, you know uh, or note to highlight that uh, even with uh, uh, the, the, the regime tried to play the sectarian card for, uh, for a few days. It did not work. The same day, the same night, people of Latakia went on the streets and said, we're all Syrians, all one hand. Uh, they let tried ask, to use the, ask, these... Let uh, me ask uh, Professor Jabour this, if he can hear me. Did the government miscalculate by uh, playing the sectarian card, by blaming much of the unrest on the Muslim Brotherhood, by criminalizing the protesters and, and putting this whole issue in, in very sectarian terms? Well, uh, we have to say something, I have to say something on, in this regard. Uh, there is Sheikh Karadawi who uh, sort of talked a sectarian language and we did not uh, like it in Syria. Uh, I suppose uh, even my friends who have Islamic tendencies did not uh, approve of the statements of Sheikh Karadawi, uh, who talked a sectarian language. Now, in Syria, we are far from the sectarian language. Uh, we despise it. Uh, we think that it is unthinkable to think of a citizen as belonging to this or that sect. Yet, we are neighbors to Lebanon. And Lebanon, of course, the whole political life is based on sectarianism. And then there is sectarianism in the area altogether. Uh, and this is bad uh, for Syria, bad for workers uh, on a human rights basis uh, in politics. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, we have to overcome this. Uh, the government is certainly uh, against sectarianism. And uh, I suppose uh, most of the demonstrators, perhaps all of the demonstrators, I cannot judge, are against sectarianism. Uh, we have to be all against sectarianism. We consider ourselves for, for and foremost Syrian citizens, and uh, this is enough as an identification. Yes, al Maleh, do, do you accept that argument? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I agree that we are a society that is, uh, in, in general, against uh, sectarianism. Uh, but uh, with all due respect to uh, Professor Jabour, the first one really who spoke about sectarianism and brought the issue up was Buthayna Shaban and was not Dr. Qardawi. So let's keep the, the, the facts straight. What about the accusations against the Muslim Brotherhood? Are these warranted or have 
members of the groups been politically eliminated a long time ago? Uh, I mean, the, uh, it's uh, it's very well known to everyone that uh, since the 80s, uh, Muslim Brotherhood does not exist on the ground in Syria. We have a law number 49 on the books uh, in Syria that is uh, uh, sentence uh, everyone who is uh, suspected of belonging to the Muslim Brotherhood to death. Uh, so uh, that that uh, excuse, uh, that lie uh, that the government brought up uh, is uh, is uh, uh, you know nobody will believe that. Uh, uh, that the Muslim Brotherhood is behind all this. Professor Jabour, uh, going back to you on the issue of the support base that uh, Bashar al-Assad still has, how significant do you think it is? How broad-based and how genuine is it? Well, a little comment on uh, law number 49. Uh, I am personally against it. Uh, I think that it is not applied at all. Uh, Sheikh Karadawi uh, visited Syria and he is a member of the uh, Islam Muslim Brotherhood, and then he was not uh, detained. He met the president. Uh, he praised the president. So I suppose we have to take uh, law number 49 in the circumstances in which it was uh, passed. I'm asking but you then, about the support uh, base that the President Bashar. I'm asking you about the support base that President Bashar al-Assad still enjoys I'm today. I'm asking you about how much support. President Bashar al-Assad still enjoys in Syria today. He was once thought to well, be a reformer. Uh, I suppose is he we, still? Yeah, yeah. This is a very good question. Uh, I suppose we have witnessed the demonstrations that uh, of support for President Assad recently, uh, and then of course we witness uh, some demonstrations here and there uh, against President Assad. Uh, at times I wonder, and I would like. Uh, my friend Haysam al Maleh uh, to uh, more or less think with me on that. Uh, how can we uh, make a, a sort of uh, a real referendum, a real uh, uh, reading of the state of opinion uh, in Syria? Uh, we witnessed a one million and even more than one million uh, persons demonstration in Syria in support of President Assad. And we are witnessing uh, pro demonstrations against President Assad. Where the will of the people lies? This is a very good question. And uh, then again, when we say that we have to make uh, free elections, well, on the basis of what uh, law? Uh, what electoral law which sh shall we choose? This is also uh, important things. I ask the uh, demonstrators, and some of them are distinguished in their uh, insight and in their feeling of public responsibility, to address themselves to these issues and to address these issues positively. I uh, remember uh, very nicely that one uh, al Basi newspaper asked me to express my views on the lifting of the state of emergency. Uh, I told them that the best expert on the emergency law is uh, lawyer Haysam al-Bali. And they contacted him, and I am glad that his view on the, uh, on the uh, law of emergency uh, was published uh, near my uh, view on it. And we both uh, uh, advocated the uh, abrogation of the state of emergency. Uh, so I suppose that this is a, a, a very blessed moment uh, with my esteemed colleagues if we direct our attention to positive reconstruction of uh, more democratic uh, Syria, more peaceful Syria within a process of peaceful political reform. Let's quickly get uh, Yas al Malik to respond to this. How can you look positively when every day people are being killed on the street just simply for walking in the street and saying what's on their mind? How can you look positively at any promises of, of reforms? Uh, these are simply lies. If, if the killings will stop, maybe people can think maybe there is uh, a, a real, honest, uh, sincere uh, promise of, of reforms. But obviously, when you kill people while you are talking uh, in the morning on TV saying, I'm, I promise reforms, and then in the evening we hear of, uh, of people getting killed, that is not a promise of reform. If that president cannot control his security forces, then he does not deserve to be a president. It's Iyas simple. Al Iyas al Al Osama Munajjid and George Abur, thank you all very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story.
And thank you for being with us. We, of course, welcome your suggestions and comments. As always, do email them to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. From me and the team, thanks for watching. Thank you.